Welcome to a short video tutorial on settling the spectrogram layer in Sonic Visualizer properly for measuring various elements of musical performances. This tutorial is part of a set of introductions to the methods of software-based musicological performance research and to Sonic Visualizer in particular. You may find the associated chapter as part of the book Softwaregestützte Interpretationsforschung containing further thoughts and some more detailed discussions. The tutorial will give an insight into the basic functions of Sonic Visualizer Spectrogram layer, followed by a short note on the Fourier analysis uncertainty principle, which affects Sonic Visualizer Spectrogram resolution. Finally, we will talk about choosing appropriate window sizes within the spectrograms. But first of all, what are time-sensitive performance elements on the one hand and frequency-sensitive elements on the other? Naturally, almost all elements of a musical performance are both time and frequency-sensitive, as sound evolves over time. However, some elements rather rely on setting precise points in time, such as note onsets and note durations or on their development over time, such as in tempo or in overall dynamics of the performance. By contrast, other elements are mainly characterized by their frequency contents rather than their precise onsets, such as pitches and dynamics of single voices. And of course, there are elements which operate somewhere in between, such as articulation, vibrato, and portamento of a single note or to interconnect multiple notes. In fact, this may be the largest group of musical elements. Overall, a basic understanding of the time and frequency sensitivity of these elements is crucial to set the properties of the spectrogram right for productive and valid measurements. First, we will start with a quick overview of the basic functions of Sonic Visualizer's spectrogram layer. To add in spectrogram layer, select Layer, Add Spectrogram. Alternatively, you may simply press the Shift and G keys on your keyboard at the same time. You may also choose one of Sonic Visualizer's preset spectrograms. A short discussion of them is included to the book chapter. In our example, you will now see a spectrogram of the opening section of Beethoven's Opus 47, the so-called Kreuzer Sonate, for piano and violin, played by the 18-year-old Yehudi Menuhin and his 14-year-old sister Hefziba Menuhin in 1934. Let's listen to it for a few seconds. As can be seen, most of the upper frequency information is noise, which for the most part seems to be neglectable when aiming for musical information. Therefore, you may rescale your y-axis towards a more detailed range, which is 0 to 7000 Hz in our example. To do so, simply double-click the vertical pane wheel and type in your new margins. 
Consider Sonic Visualizer's dialog box in the upper right corner of the pane. When the spectrogram layer is active, the box delivers a number of information on the spectrogram window that is currently spotted by the hand. The respective window is represented by a little white frame around the hand's index finger. From the dialog box you may retrieve its start and end time, its bin frequency, which means the range of theoretically possible frequencies within the reach of this frame, its bin pitch, that means the translation of these frequencies into musical pitches, as well as the information on its level range in negative dBFS units, commonly referred to as the amplitude level of the respective frequency, and its phase. Note that the closer the dBFS indication is towards zero, the brighter the window will appear. Let's have a look towards the spectrogram properties on the right. The first two rows are for settling color representation only and will not affect the data output of the spectrogram. You may choose between different color maps. You may settle the color threshold, that is the amplitude level necessary to be captured by the spectrogram. This may be useful if you would like to hide low level noise. Or you may rotate the color's meanings, that is for instance attributing yellow instead of green to very quiet frequencies. The second row gives you the option of various representation scales. You may choose a linear representation which colors the spectrogram according to the frequency's actual dBFS levels. However, as you can see, higher overtones may disappear in this setting since they appear to be simply too quiet. Therefore, the logarithmic dB scale is preset by Sonic Visualizer, which basically overrepresents higher frequency contents in order to make them stay visible. I usually prefer one of the two options in between, meter or the exponentiated dB scale. Both of them give a more realistic picture of what can actually be heard from the record. Besides that, they reduce the visibility of technical noise components. Next to the scale box, you may set the reference points for the color brightness. Choosing the call option will normalize the level representation within each column of FFT windows. This means that the colors of quiet windows are brightened up, so even very quiet windows will become better visible. The view option does the same by comparing all columns within the actual pane view. while the hybrid option compares each column with its neighbors, so these two options appear to be not as extreme as the call option. However, to get meaningful results from these normalization properties, it certainly needs some practice, so we will stick to the preset for now. Eventually, you may add some gain to the color representation, so quieter sections will be depicted as being louder than they actually are. The third row settles the spectrogram resolution, which is most crucial for the accuracy of the output data as well. You may choose between different window sizes, which determines the number of samples given for the fast Fourier transformation in order to calculate the frequency components for each interval. In other words, it settles the duration for each window to determine its frequency contents. Therefore, a low value will result in a high time resolution and a low frequency resolution, while a high value will result in the opposite. You may see the difference in the changing shape of the frame as well, which changes from a vertical towards a somewhat horizontal rectangle. 
we will come back to this crucial option. But for now, let's stay with an in-between value of 2048 samples, which is actually pretty well suited for most elements of musical performance. Next to the window sizes, you will find an overlap property, which basically telescopes the windows to the given percentage in order to provide a better resolution in time. For most instances, high overlap values will be helpful to reach better resolutions in frequency and time, as you can see here. The last option within the row is the oversampling property, which virtually multiplies the number of samples given by the recording before the transformation starts to calculate the spectrogram. Just think of it like using a high-end resolution cam to make a picture of a pre-existing photograph. The number of pixels will rise significantly, but the picture itself is the same blurred one as before. However, this procedure may help for algorithms to create the impression of a more sharp photograph in post-production. Therefore, you may choose a high value here in order to gain a sharper representation of the frequencies, but do not mistake them for in fact more accurate frequency values. In order to avoid this impression, especially when dealing with data exports, I recommend to leave the oversampling property off. Finally, the first of the two selection boxes in the last row makes it easier to find relevant data within the spectrogram. The bins property filters the frequencies based on their levels. So the peak bins option will show only windows which are louder compared to their upper and lower neighbors. This makes it very easy to see the core frequencies of a melody. However, as can be seen in the dialog box, Sonic Visualizer still gives a frequency range as output. To work with single values, you may either calculate an estimated mean or use a third option, the frequency spin. This option will give you one single line for each window, indicating some sort of core frequency within the bin as an estimation based on a mathematical prediction of pitch developments. Even though this option has some pitfalls as well, I would like to highly recommend its use to generate qualified frequency estimations. Last but not least, we've got the y-axis scaling option here. It allows for switching from a linear to a logarithmic scale, which means that the frequencies are arranged on a scale of even pitch intervals that correspond to our natural perception of pitch rising. In fact, if this option is chosen, a stylized piano keyboard appears as part of the y-axis, which may make it easier to read the spectrogram more quickly and intuitively. Which scale to use is mainly a matter of taste here. I personally prefer the linear scale, since it makes it easier to find and measure overtones, even in recordings of a large frequency bandwidth. The log option, on the other hand, may allow for easier pitch tracking and for evaluating the interplay of different voices. Let's have a closer look to this interesting vibrato of Menuhin. It seems to be accelerating in speed and increasing in range. To validate this first impression, we may replay it with reduced speed by double-clicking the master playback speed wheel. Setting it, let's say, to 70% and replay again. I would still say the vibrato slightly accelerates in speed and it certainly gains in range remarkably. To quantify that, we may zoom in a bit
switch to the frequency option and compare an early and a late cycle of this vibrato. To do so, we take the frequency values for their lower and upper inflection points. The respective values are given again in the dialog box in the upper right corner. In fact, the vibrato grows in range, amounting to a gain of 21 cents from the start to the ending. This is pretty much in line with other violinists of Menuhin's generation, expressing musical tension in very flexible vibratos. Even though 21 cents are actually not that much, at least compared to, let's say, German violinists of the mid of the 20th century. Now, back to the uncertainty principle mentioned earlier. Remember that spectrograms give either a good resolution in time or a good resolution in frequency. Considering vibratos, this is a problem, since their inflection points pass by too fast to be captured accurately by the transform. This means that the more you try to capture the vibrato's precise frequency range, the more the vibrato is virtually decreasing in range. If measured at a short window size, on the other hand, the vibrato's range may appear highly exaggerated because of the low frequency resolution. Regarding the last cycle of our vibrato, the difference in window sizes results in a difference in theoretical maximum range of 440 cents, which corresponds to no less than almost four and a half semitones. Keep in mind that these values have nothing to do with Menuhin's factual vibrato range. Instead, they are due to the uncertainty of visualization. While the truth lies somewhere in between, this in turn means that we always will have some kind of tolerance in the values gathered from spectrograms. In order to keep this tolerance as low as possible, consider the following table which gives recommendations for window sizes appropriate for various performance elements. Regarding vibrato ranges, a medium window size of 2048 samples is recommended, which results in tolerances of almost 50 milliseconds in time resolution and 22 Hz in frequency resolution. While these still seem to be pretty high values, the potential error may be reduced if higher overtones are considered for measurements, so that the relative send value here diminishes. Also be aware that time-sensitive measurements benefit from small window sizes with reduced tolerance for time resolution. For instance, a window size of 32 samples results in a time tolerance of less than one millisecond only. Frequency-sensitive measurements, on the other hand, become more yielding if large window sizes are chosen. For instance, a maximum size of 32,768 samples results in a pitch indication with a tolerance of only 1.35 Hz. Finally, the right choice of window sizes always depends on your research question. For instance, precise frequency or time values are sometimes not really important, as long as a powerful visualization is generated that will do for representation issues. As soon as it comes to statistical evaluation of large data sets of various musical performances, though, it may be helpful to know that spectrograms are highly delicate tools, which regarding the quality of their data generation greatly depend on the decisions of the researcher. Thank you for watching and please contact us for further questions or hints. To stay updated about further proceedings on this topic, you may also consider our mailing list, which aims to connect researchers in the field of software-based performance research and informs on future developments, tutorials, conferences and publications.